<laughs> Not at all. Oh, are you glad to be here today? How many of you are glad you came to church today? Isn't it great? Wow, I'm so, yeah, yeah, give God praise. It's great. Awesome. That smattering of applause was amazing. Uh, so, uh, do you have your Bibles? All right, why don't you grab them? We have, uh, we've been going through a series of messages now, and this is the fourth part, uh, and we've titled this, I'm In. I'm In. And we've kind of done a play on that word, in, and we've talked about how uh, things like God has invited us to be part of His family, and how we are invaluable to the Lord. Uh, today, I'd like to share a message uh, entitled this, I'm invested, I'm invested. This is a fun subject when we start dealing with our giving, because, uh, and, and, and let, me just, let me just go there, um, some of you have been in situations where uh, maybe this has been abused a bit, uh, in a church. This is not going to be one of those situations, okay? Uh, we're not going to go there, but if you were to look at Matthew chapter 6, there are three occasions or three things that Jesus teaches where he says, when you do this, I call them the when yous. <laughs> he says, when you pray, then he gave a lesson on prayer. And I said, when you fast, then he gave a teaching on fasting. And he did, when you give. And then he gave a, a lesson on giving. And I think it's important for us to have a very balanced view and a biblical view of my role as a person who invests in the kingdom of God with my resources. Uh, let me also say that this is not an infomercial, okay? This is, I'm not going to take another offering, uh, unless they tell me in the back it was really bad, then we might, <laughs> no, not going to take another offering, okay, uh, at all. What, what I want to do, I want you to see this discipline, if you will, the same as you would a discipline of prayer and the discipline of reading God's word and the discipline of sharing your faith, I think this is also an important facet of our walk with God. And this is one that we tend to get real sensitive about, or we kind of get, ah, ah, don't talk about my money. And, and I'm not going to talk about your money. I'm going to talk about God, God's money. Uh, <laughs> that was so good. And so it was. So I, I, I want you to see what this is about. And, and uh, uh, Paul writes to probably, in my opinion, was probably his favorite church that he planted in Philippi. It's the Philippians. So go to Philippians chapter 4 if you're not there already. And we're going to start in verse 10. And I, I, I want us to see that our giving is not just about expense, you know, this is not another expense. Our giving is actually an investment in the kingdom of God, right? And I can also tell you that there can be no greater investment than in the work of Jesus Christ. I don't know how many of you are in the stock market, for example. Thank you, son. He does it all, doesn't he, folks? Wow. Plays guitar, gives us water, good looking. Uh, you know, the stock market can be up and down, up and down. Uh, <laughs> believe me, they can be up and down. But there's no greater investment than the work of Jesus, and that's what I want us to attach ourselves to, is to the work of God. And God uses us to get His work accomplished. And yes, He uses our activity, He uses our, our sweat, our work, right? And that's great. But he also uses our giving of our resources as well. And so that's that one part that I want to touch on today when we talk about what God expects from his children. He wants us to be invested in the kingdom. 
And so I want to show you how Paul went there with this church. And it, it's, it's great. This teaching is so good. I'm really anxious to share it with you. So if you're able to, why don't you stand with me in honor of God's word as we read Philippians chapter 4. And we'll start in verse 10, and we'll go to verse 20. You ready? Paul says, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you renewed, you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I'm not saying this because I'm in need, for I've learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out for Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more be credited to your account. I've received full payment and I've more than enough. I am amply supplied now that I have received from Epaphroditus, probably my favorite Bible name, impress your friends with that one, would you? Epaphroditus, the gifts that you sent, they are a fragrant offering, an acceptable sacrifice, pleasing to God. And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord, I pray that you would show us the importance of being invested in your work and in your kingdom. So, Lord God, speak to us through your word, I pray. And God, I pray that you would guide our response, that it would be a way that would bring glory to you. And Lord, I'll thank you for all you do. We'll give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. And we all said, amen. Amen. You may be seated. I'm invested. So again, this message is not an attempt to try to raise funds, okay? We did not have a board meeting, and the board did not, you know, slam on the conference table and say, you need to start preaching on giving, boy. That's not what they did uh, at all. Uh, And I I can tell you that God's taking care of us. God has taken care of Bethel Church, even during a pandemic, folks. Okay, just so you know, okay? I'm just, I'll I'll make this part of the introduction then. Uh, <laughs> you're all saying, I thought he was done with the introduction. Okay, just hang with me. But what, what I've seen God do for Bethel Church, when we, we, actually, in, <laughs> we actually increased our giving to our missionaries <clears throat> during a pandemic. Okay, now I know some churches, I won't say who, uh, I know some churches that said, oh, we got to make some cuts, and missions was the first thing that they cut. And I've made this statement before, and I'm going to say it again. I am not going to cut missions in this church. We're not going to do that. So when we made missions an even bigger priority, and we still have, I think, a ways to go, but when we made missions a greater priority, God began to take care of us. Well, He always has, but in 2020, during a pandemic, finishing in the black for a lot of churches was... A miracle. Uh, our income actually went up. Now, how's that happen, Pastor? God. God. So, my goal when I talk about giving, okay, because again, some of you are thinking, oh boy, I don't like this subject. I want you to like this subject because I want you to be blessed. I want you to experience what Paul's talking about in his dealing with the giving of this church to his ministry. So I want to accomplish two things here today. Number one, I want to affirm those of us who have invested in the work of God in this place. And I tell you this all the time, I want you to know, I'm so proud of you. I'm so thankful for you, for the sacrifice and for the investment that you have made by your giving to the work of God. It is incredible. Bethel Church, here, Bethel Church is known for its generosity. 
Okay, we are. And believe me, I know churches that aren't. <laughs> and they're about three, four, five, six, seven times our size. And, and, but God has, God has used Bethel Church. I think one of our core values is that of generosity. We love to bless the work of God. So I want to affirm, I want you to know that you are valued, whatever your gift is, by the way. And, and you know what? If you look at stats, well, you know, those people must be rich. <laughs> Here's what's funny. If you look, uh, the richer people are, statistically, in our country, the less they give. It, I, it's crazy. And, and, and it, it's, so it's not like, you know, what we need is a bunch of millionaires. No, nah, not really. We, we just need the church to be faithful. And, and by the way, you are not identified or judged by how much you give. I don't know what everybody gives. So, you know, I don't look, oh, there's a $1,000 one. Oh, you know, there, there's a $3 one over there. You know, it just, I don't do that. I don't do that. Because any gift is valued by the Lord. Okay? So understand that. So my second then my second purpose in this is to challenge those of us who maybe have yet to experience the joy of what comes with investing in the kingdom of God. So what I want to do today is look at, uh, look at some various stages of generosity that Paul identifies with the Philippian church. And this is really good. You all ready? Okay? All right. I, I promise not to take too long because some of you want cake. I can see it in your eyes. We dare, <laughs> we dare not stand in between you and birthday cake. Um, number one, let's look at this word, the word support. Support. I love verse 10. Paul talks about the support that he received from this church in Philippi, the Philippian church. Here's what he says. I rejoice greatly in the Lord. At last you renewed your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. Now, it's interesting when you look at this verse because it looks like that for whatever reason and at some point, the Philippians had their focus on Paul's ministry kind of revived. So for some reason, maybe it had waned a little bit, but now it had been revived again. There, there was a newfound uh, devotion and support that this church had to the work that Paul was doing. Uh, maybe they got distracted. Maybe life happened to this church. Maybe a pandemic hit. <laughs> and they said, well, you know, I guess we got to cut our support of Paul, and then Paul said, wow, I've recently noticed that your concern for me has been revived, and your support for me has been uh, intensified again. And I wonder today, if each of us could have a renewed concern for the lost and the hurting. Because here's what I have found, okay? Uh, Jesus said, where your heart is, your treasure will follow. Okay? Um, and, and some of us, our treasure is... Uh, uh, <laughs> it's at Burger King. Uh, uh, <laughs> they have great fries, though. Uh, but some of us, our, our treasure, our treasure is not where it should be. And folks, if we don't have, if we, the church, if we don't have a concern, an intense concern for the lost and for the hurting and for the poor, then whom can we expect to have that concern? Well, thankfully, we got the government. <laughs> Ronald Reagan once said, he's one of my heroes, Ronald Reagan once said, and I'm paraphrasing, one of the worst things you could ever hear is, hi, we're from the government and we're here to help. Uh, that, you know, don't ban me on YouTube for that. But I believe that God wants to use his people. 
And I don't believe that we need to create an entitled society that is dependent on authority to do life for them. I believe that God wants the church. You see this dynamic in the church in the book of Acts chapter 2. After Pentecost had been poured out and after the Holy Spirit just baptized everybody, the Bible says that everybody was together and they had everything in common. They were helping one another. They were basically taking care of one another. That was a dynamic in the church. And it also goes for our community as well. Where do I have a heart for the lost? How do you respond when you see lost people? If it detests you, those lost people make me sick. You've got a spirit that is not right. Because we need a broken heart for the people who don't know Jesus just yet. If we see people hurting, we need to have a heart for the hurting, a heart for the hungry, a heart for the people that need Jesus. That's where our support goes. Let me tell you something. We don't support every single missionary that asks me to support them. Did you know that? I get calls all the time. And, and they, you know, they want, yeah, hey, I want you to support our ministry. And I'm thinking, mm, no, 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 no. Because I, I, I see the fruit or the lack thereof. But I'm going to show you some ministries that we do support. Man, I can, I can attach myself to that. And you'll see in a little bit. But let's go to number two. Not only was there support, but then Paul identified a secret. Paul identified a secret. I want to speak to the person who says, I don't have enough, so I can't give. Okay, I want to, I want to talk to you about that. Uh, because I don't see that being biblical. Now, you may not be able to invest as much as somebody else, but that does not exclude you from investing in the work of Jesus. Do you hear me today? Because what am I trying to do? I'm trying to get you to, to understand that there is a blessing that comes by investing in the work of God. Look at verses 11, 12, and 13. Paul says this, I'm not saying this because I'm in need. For I've learned to be content, whatever the circumstances. Boy, does our nation need that verse. I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Whether well-fed or hungry, whether living, plenty, or in want, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. See, that verse gets taken out of context a lot. You know, I can do all things through Christ, so I can dunk a basketball. Okay, that promise doesn't really work for me, I can tell you that. I could dunk a donut. Um, but Paul Paul clarifies something he says look this isn't about me getting your money he knew how to have plenty of money and he knew how to live when he didn't have any Paul knew how to live when he was hungry and Paul knew how to live when he was well fed so, just like this sermon, this letter that Paul's writing is not a fundraiser. It's way deeper than that. Here's Paul's secret. You ready for this? Paul's secret was the fact that he could do everything for the Lord because the Lord was his everything. You see? So I could do all things. Because the Lord's my everything. So, okay, if, and, and if you're in a, a time in your life where you're in need, you can do this. Okay, you, God's not given up on you. God's not rejected you. And if you're in, in a time of plenty, 
you could do this. God's always been with you, and He's with you now. You can do this. Paul knew that regardless of the situations, he would be taken care of by the Lord. Let me say it again. Paul knew whatever circumstances he was in, he would be taken care of by the Lord. That we would embrace this secret, church. That when we're faithful to the Lord, we can have this trust that he is our everything and he'll take care of us. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. Number three, I'm trying to hurry because now I want cake. <laughs> it's like my kryptonite, you know? Like, I'm good with it, but you put cake, it's like, oh, okay. Number three, the word sharing. <laughs> sharing. This is where, this is where we see that Paul identifies that there's a partnership that's taking place between him and the church. Let me say it again. Paul's identifying that there's a partnership now that takes place between him and the church. Likewise, folks, there's a partnership that takes place between Bethel Church and many people literally all over the world. Look what he says in verses 14 through 16. He says, Yet it was good of you to share in my troubles. There's that word share. Moreover, as you Philippians know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving except you only. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me uh, aid more than once when I was in need. Uh, this, is, this is where we look at the generosity of the local church. Okay. He, he identifies this relationship as being way more than a support slash missionary relationship. They're actually sharing in his troubles. They, they are actually sharing, not just in their resources, but even deeper than that. In fact, when, when Paul uses the word sharing, he uses this word that some of you might recognize in the Greek, koinonia. It's a word that literally means fellowship. Paul is literally saying, we are fellowshipping together in my troubles. You are fellowshipping with me in your support with me. It's not just a donor-recipient relationship. It was deeper than that. It wasn't just Paul's ministry. It was the church's ministry as well. Now, I want to flesh this out and understand that this, is apply, this applies to Bethel Church in 2021 as well. Because if we're not living in generosity, I think we're falling short of God's plan for us as a church. I don't want you to just see a, an envelope dropped in a box or a figure that you type in and then hit enter. I want you to understand that there's more to it. There, there's a mission with that gift. And maybe I could show you some of what we invest in. Take a look at the screen. These are some of the greatest heroes. The Caldwells, Mike and Debbie Caldwell. I've literally known them for over, for a long time. Uh, and I've, I've served with them uh, on short-term missions. They were the first missionaries that we as a church picked up when I became pastor here. Mike and Debbie Caldwell. They are, they were missionaries to Uruguay. Now they are missionaries and they oversee the education and the training of pastors in, are you ready for that? in all of Latin America. I can get behind that. 
How about, how about some organization called the Convoy of Hope? Oh, man. How about, how about a group that was started by a man by the name of Hal Donaldson that filled his pickup truck up with food to help a neighbor? And God inspired him to do something even greater. To now, to this day, they are disaster response specialists. If there's a tornado this week, convoy is going to be there. If there's a hurricane, convoy is going to be there. If there's an earthquake, if there's a tsunami, convoy is going to be there and oftentimes they are there before the red cross is even there their ministry has grown so incredibly that they have partnerships now with with corporations like like home depot and and i i mean gosh now i'm gonna blank out on all the all the partnerships they have it's i mean i couldn't believe it i went to haiti one time to look uh, at their orphanages that they have started in Haiti. And they took me to their warehouse. Uh, remember, Haiti had that incredible earthquake that killed hundreds of thousands of people. Haiti showed up there years ago. They haven't left yet. And they're not going to. I walked in their warehouse. It looked like a Sam's Club. I mean, they are ready to feed people all over the poorest nation in the world. I can get behind that. I can get behind that. How about one of my best friends, Jeremiah Hembry, and his beautiful wife, Heather, and their sons, Scotty and Robbie. They lead a group called Royal Rangers International. Get this. They provide discipleship and discipleship training to children through a ministry that used to be just confined in the United States. Now, they are actually mentoring and discipling children all over the world. And Jeremiah goes from country to country to country to country, providing support and training and leadership to all of these leaders and seeing boys and girls get saved all over the world. I could get behind that. How about what's probably a personal favorite for most of you? The Shafies. Hader and Nicole Shafi. Hader was a Muslim. He gave his life to Jesus Christ. While he was at Kent State University, he met this beautiful former cheerleader with more energy than a hundred people. Nicole. They've gotten married, obviously, and now they are leading a, a college ministry to Kent State University. And now they have begun, and I think they're the only Chi Alpha missionary that I know that does this. They're also now also reaching the University of Akron as well. And together, those two, those two, and pray for Hader, by the way. His father passed away a couple weeks ago. He's actually stuck in Saudi Arabia right now trying to get back. They're making him get a vaccination before he can get on the plane. So you pray for that. But, but I can tell you this, when I see I have personally seen the college students whose lives have been changed because of them. I can, I can get behind that. How about what this church does? We just announced that we got the back-to-school giveaway coming up. Oh, we got this little thing called the giveaway. These are outreaches that we have literally now, now, in, in the years that we've done all these outreaches, these are outreaches that we literally have touched thousands of people. This little church, whatever that means, but this church has touched thousands of people by giving them clothing, giving them groceries, giving them toys, giving them furniture, and most importantly, giving them Jesus Christ. We have seen hundreds of decisions for Jesus Christ made at these events. That's something that I can get behind. You see, what am I talking about here? What we're doing, we're partnering with 
the Shafies and the Caldwells. We're, we're partnering with a church that tries to do some creative things to reach people and meet their needs and, and help the hurting. And, and I'm not asking you to give to something that's not going to have any impact. I can't even tell you the names of some of our missionaries because we're online right now and they're in sensitive countries. And if the government found out that they were missionaries, they would be kicked out of the country or jailed or worse. That's the kind of stuff that we get behind this isn't about trying to make Bethel Church rich. This isn't about me trying to get rich. Please, gave up on that probably the first day I started ministry. But here's the deal. What this is about is investing in the work of Jesus Christ. That's what it is. I got to hurry. Number four, surplus. The word surplus. Verse 17. We're talking about surplus. Here's what he said. He said, not that I desire your gifts. Did you hear Paul? This is a missionary saying this. How many missionaries actually show up and say, I don't want your, your gifts. We're good. Thanks. But, but he says, not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more would be credited to your account. So Paul was like, this isn't about me. Philippians, this is about you. And what this preacher is saying, this isn't about our bottom line. This isn't about our bank account. God's taking care of us. You know what this is? This is about you. I want it to be credited to your account. So whenever we receive an offering, when, whenever we enter into that time in our service, whenever you designate your gifts online or by whatever means you choose to do so, I don't want you to think about the money more than you think about the mission. Those faces that I showed you, that's what I want you to think about. Those things that we're doing to try to please the Lord, that's what I want you to think about. This morning, I would ask you to not think about the cost of our giving, but the return of it. I believe the Lord rewards us when we invest in His kingdom. It doesn't even make sense how God took care of us during this pandemic. It doesn't. We, but he did it. And it's not my job to figure him out. It's my job just to be faithful. It's my job to be faithful. Let me skip that, and I'll go to the last one. <laughs> the word supply. This is one of those verses that we like to quote a lot. Especially when we're in need, right? But I think Paul quotes this verse or gives us this verse through the Holy Spirit's inspiration. Not for it to be your wishing well verse. My God shall supply all my needs. Genie in the lamp, give me three wishes. Here's what he says, my God will meet all your needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. To our God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. See, here's the deal. There, there's a promise that God has for all of us when we commit to a lifestyle of generosity. God promises to be our source when we commit to be our missionary's source. That's how God uses us. Here's the great exchange. You ready for this? Look at this. God provides for, for others through you, and then he provides for you through himself. That's how he does it. Now, when I give, I'm not bribing God. Ooh, ooh this will make him do my bidding, you know, I, no, but when I give as the Lord instructs me and leads me, he provides for me. Now, we need to be open as to how God does that, okay, because if you're trusting God to give you the winning lottery ticket, you need to stop because I pray against the lottery. 
I do. I do. It, it's the worst thing to happen to most people who've won it, if not all of them. So stop taking up the line when I want my Polar Pop and quit buying those stupid tickets. Oh, and my drink. And, oh, $30 worth of scratch-offs. Oh, I could have this done by now. I remember one time, I don't, I don't even know what they're called, Mega Millions, whatever. The Mega Millions was like, I don't know, $8 billion. I don't know what it was. And, and I'm at a gas station. Some lady says, don't you want to get your Mega Millions ticket? And I said, no, no, my father gives me everything I need. And she's like, okay, do you want your receipt? No, I'm good. God will take care of me. God takes care of me. Is it always easy? No. I've been in plenty. I've been in want. I've been well taken care of. I've seen times where it was a challenge. We've all been there. But God is always faithful. He's always faithful. And that's what I want you to know. That we would excel in this grace and in this gift of giving. So, you say, Pastor, how are you going to have us respond to this? Are you taking another offering? No. You're going to throw cash at the altar? No. Although, no. <laughs> Daddy needs a new driver. Um, no, I, I want to I give you something. And... Uh, yeah, again, this whole title of this is I'm Invested. I, I, I want you to feel like you can invest in the work of God. And uh, Andy, maybe you can help me out, and uh, Jonathan, why don't you help me out as well? Just Can you hand these out to everybody? Thank you. Okay. Okay. He's shunned from the family again. All right. Um, my very last slide, I have an example of a card that... It, that, that I'm not going to receive. Let me say this again. I'm not going to receive this card, okay? I want to give you something for you. In fact, in fact can I ask you this? Don't, don't fill it out now. Don't fill it out now. In fact, don't fill it out today. Uh, so, sometimes I go to these ministry meetings and they hand out these pledge cards and they want me to like make a big old financial commitment right there. And it's like, oh, I need to pray about this. And so I want you to pray about this. And this is for you to keep. Okay? Don't give me your card. I don't want your card. There's no place for you to put your name. Okay? This is for you to keep. But I wonder what God might do if we have some renewed commitments to do some of these things. And by the way, those of you who are online, I believe we have a link to this, so you can download it online as well. Uh, maybe you're not a person who tithes. And what we, what we mean by a tithe is give 10% of your income. Well, should I give 10% of what's taxed or not taxed, Pastor? You know what? Give the part that you want blessed. How's that? How's that? Okay? And so... You sort that out. But uh, there, there's only one time in the scriptures, it's in the book of Malachi, for those of you who are Italian, Malachi. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> where, where the word tells us, the word tells us to bring the whole tithe into the, uh, into the uh, <laughs> did I say the outhouse? <laughs> bring the whole tithe. <laughs> I didn't say that, thank God because I have messed up before, and I don't want to share that story now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, on the PK knows what that is. But bring the whole tithe into the storehouse. <laughs> and, and I'm paraphrasing the verse. God says, see if I might not just pour out the blessings, open the windows of heaven upon you. And then, then God s says this crazy statement. This is the only time he ever says it. He says, test me on this. No other, no other occasion does God tell us to test him. Ooh. 
So if that is, and, and so 10, tithe literally means 10%. Okay, well, I tithe 2%. Okay, that's not a tithe, okay? You might give 2%, that, that's wonderful, but, but a tithe literally means a 10%. So maybe you would like to, well, that's an Old Testament principle, by the way. I love that one, okay? Because it's mentioned in the New Testament, Jesus never teaches against it, nor does he discourage it. In fact, you see in the New Testament that people actually give way over and above their tithe. So if you want to go New Testament on me, go ahead. So maybe you want to tithe on, on your income or, or your family's income. Maybe you would consider providing support for one of our missionaries, like the ones that I showed you. We support 21 different missionaries right now. I'd like for that number to increase. And I'd like for our amount that we support all of our missionaries to increase as well. Uh, it costs $60 a month on the average to support our missionaries. A couple get a little bit more. Uh, maybe God's leading you to do something like that, or maybe, maybe half a missionary. I, I'll support his leg, uh, you know, <laughs> and his forearm. That's about twenty-five. So, but but maybe 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 you're not in the habit of. <laughs> this is way more silly than I thought this message was going to go. It's the cake. I know it is. I see it. It's over there. Um, but maybe God's leading you to give towards missions, and, and many of you do. Many of you do. But uh, maybe we can increase that. Who knows? Maybe we can give all of our missionaries a little bit more so we can meet their needs. You saw the Hembrys. Uh, he's based now in Missouri. He flies out of Missouri almost every weekend. Okay. One pastor said, well, we're not going to support you anymore because you're not a missionary anymore because you're not overseas. And I was like, I want names. Who, who is this? He wouldn't tell me. Uh, so sometimes our missionaries lose support. Okay. Again, we won't do that. Uh, maybe uh, you would like to contribute. A lot of you do. You'd like to contribute to our outreach ministries like the back to school blessing in the giveaway. Um, that'd be amazing. Or maybe God's leading you to give towards some other area of the church. What I want you to do is prayerfully, I'm going to say that word again, prayerfully consider how you might become even more invested in the work of Jesus here through Bethel Church. And I'm going to promise you this, and I can speak for not only myself, but also for the four board members that we have, is that we don't waste God's money around here. We don't. I, I, I won't. I won't. So we will, we will invest God's money in the way that it should be invested. And I can't wait to see what God does through that. And this isn't even about us. It, it's about just attaching ourselves to the work like the Shafies and the Convoy of Hope and the Caldwells and the Hembrys and others, it, it just, Lord, I want in on that. Some of you may never, ever, ever go to a foreign country, but your resources allow other people to go. Yeah. And that's what makes you a partner. Yeah. That's what makes you a partner. So I want to pray. I want to pray. And I want you to take this home and... If you're here with your spouse, uh, I'd love for you to talk and pray together on this. Okay? And don't let just one of you do it. You know, honey, I signed us up for a million dollars and Junior's not going to college. Okay? <laughs> talk that over first. But uh, honestly, pray together. Talk together. Just say, okay. And for some of us, it might be a faith step. And we'll just trust God to supply what you want to give. And then put this someplace close where you'll see it often. <laughs> the mirror, uh, the fridge, uh, your dash on your car, uh, in your Bible, if you read it every day. Uh, you know, wherever you're going to see it a lot. And be reminded that this isn't about giving money. This is about investing in the work 
and in the ministry of God. Amen? Stand with me, will you? Did you get anything out of this today? Yeah. All right. We're going to have a time of fellowship, and uh, I hope all of you will be a part. I know there's schedules in here, but I hope you all be a part of it in some way. At least grab a piece of cake and, and uh, enjoy that with us here today. And, uh, but I want to pray before we go. And, and I'll also pray for the food, and I'll pray for our time of fellowship as well, right? So you can start, start tearing into it. But uh, I want to pray that God would help you to excel in this grace of giving, having a generous spirit. Will you bow your heads with me, please? Jonathan, I'm sorry, could you help me on the guitar? One thing that we need to remember, and your heads are still bowed, one thing I want us to remember is that we give because Christ gave everything for us. That's been modeled for us. Jesus himself was generous with his own life. God the Father was generous with his own son. I'd be remiss today if I didn't give somebody a chance to accept the ultimate act of generosity, and that was the giving of Jesus to die for our sins. And if you are in need of Jesus to become your Lord and your Savior today, I want to pray for you. I won't embarrass you, but I want to pray for you. If that's you today, you'll say, I need Jesus to be my Lord, to be my Savior. I need him to forgive me of my sins. If that's you, would you just slip your hand up and put it right back down? I want to pray for you today that God would do just that. Is there anyone here? You need that from the Lord. Then Jesus, I trust today that all, at least all those that are in this building are following you. And so, Lord, I pray that as your followers, and God, I'm praying this prayer for me too, that we would actively and very deliberately see what we can do to bless your kingdom through our generosity and through our giving. God, this isn't about putting money in a box or a plate. This is, this is about partnering with your work. And what a privilege it is to do this. So Lord, I pray that you would inspire people, that you would speak to people, maybe on the way home, as they drive home, as they sit at the restaurant to eat, as they sit at home together. May they families talk about what they can do to bless your work even more, or maybe for the first time. And Lord, I pray that we would see a return of lives touched and us taken care of. And Lord, I'll thank you for that. Lord, would you bless this time of fellowship that we're about to have? Bless the food. Bless all that are here today. And God, I love you so much. I thank you for a wonderful day in your house. And it's in Jesus' name that we pray all of this. And we all said, amen. Amen. God bless you. Love you so much. Go eat cake. It's not in the Bible, but let them eat cake. We'll see you. Well, I was a good one.